Hello everybody. I made this video literally just because I had something on my mind and I was like, I gotta tell somebody this. Cause like, I'm just thinking about it and I don't know who to tell, so I'm just gonna tell you guys. So, literally, also sorry my like robot litter box has gone off, so hope you can't hear that. Sorry guys. But like, today, I was just like hanging out and I was just thinking and I thought about how like, so okay, do you know, do you know the song In the Air Tonight by Phil Collins? I was thinking about that song and I was thinking about that drum fill and I was like, why, why is this like, I'm just saying that the, the drum fill in In the Air Tonight by Phil Collins is overrated because think about it, I'm gonna, I'll play it for you right now, like by myself, like not, cause obviously this isn't what it sounds like, but I'm just saying that like reduced to this is the same thing and it's like the simplicity, it's, that's literally the drum like what I just did there that is the drum fill in in the air tonight by Phil Collins it's and y'all act like he really did something like guys I, ha I hate to break it to you Phil Collins did not invent the drums Phil Collins did not invent reverb like I'm not I'm not saying that the drum fill in that song is not good I'm just saying that like for it to be as iconic and like legendary as it is for what like for real? For what? You know? Sorry, I know I'm like really aggressive, but I just like, I can't, I don't know why people are like hyping. I mean, okay, here's my thing, is that literally that gets me so hyped. Like when I hear that drum fill, I will admit that I like, I get, I want to like, I play along like boom, 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 and it's like cool. It's a cool drum fill, but is it really like the greatest musical moment of all time? No, it is not period mark like skip a line typewriter beep beep boop so yeah that's what that's really all i had to say like that's actually the entire video is that i just really don't understand why like why are we hyping up a drum fill that's like and I mean, okay, here's one thing that I do think that like it does it deserves credit. It's good, it's cool, and it like transitions smoothly and you're like, huh? It's like unexpected and it's I love it. I adore the drum fill in In the Air Tonight by Phil Collins. I love it. But I don't think it's like revolutionary. I don't think that it changed music forever. And I don't think that I think the world would be the same without the I'm gonna say it. I'm gonna say it. Hot take. I think the world would be the same without the drum fill in In the Air Tonight by Phil Collins. I'm gonna say it. I just said it. I just said it. If you don't like it, I'm sorry. You can dislike. My last video got two dislikes. I honestly feel so famous. Like, y'all do not like my hot takes. And I know, I know it's gonna be controversial, but I had to say it because I think, I think that's on the minds of a lot of people. I think that secretly, you know, you see a lot of people every day. Do you think about how many people you see every day? Like, even if you're at home. Like, I've seen, like, eight people today. I haven't even left my house. And do you know what we're all thinking? Like, you know, maybe maybe you think somebody's thinking about, like, their significant other, their wife. Wait, that's the same thing. Their job, you know, their mother. Really? We're not thinking about that. Really? The thing that everybody in this world is thinking about is the drum fill in in the air tonight by phil collins and maybe that's the genius of the drum fill in in the air tonight by phil collins maybe just maybe it's not that it's good it's just that like we're all thinking about it because here i am i've been talking about the drum fill in in there tonight by phil collins for four minutes that's not a coincidence that i've spent four minutes of my life literally I've, wa yeah, I've wasted like four minutes, probably more because I was thinking about it before and then I did like a first take but then I said something that was like, uh, so then I just deleted it because I was like, I don't care, I don't want to say that. <laughs> it was, I, guys, I promise I didn't say anything offensive. I just said a joke and it wasn't funny. I just kind of be insecure. Anyways, so that's what I have to say about the drum fill in, in the air. Sorry that light's kind of annoying. That's what I have to say about the drum fill in, in the air tonight by Phil Collins. Um, I hope you guys, I hope you guys can see me the same after I said that, because I know that, like, a lot of, I think a lot of people are going to be upset at me for this. Like, I think I, I, I feel like I'm a martyr for saying that. But somebody had to say it, because it's all, it's on all of our minds. We're all thinking about how, like, 
uncool. It's really cool, though. I don't know. Can we talk about drums that are really good? Like, I'm wearing a Red Hot Chili Peppers shirt right now. But can we talk about the drums in all of Red Hot Chili Peppers songs? Like, ugh, the drums in Danny California went, oh, it's so good. I'm going to cry thinking about it. I'll play it for you. Actually, I won't. Wait, can I get copyrighted? Hold on. Alexa, play Danny California by Red Hot Chili Peppers. Danny California by Red Hot Chili Peppers from Spotify. Hold on, she's going to play for you. Alexa, stop. So yeah, I just think that that is like the prime example of drums. Like everybody always okay. Everybody always says that uh, John Brenham and um and Led's. I always want to say Zed Leppelin, but that's not right. Like that's not what it's called. It's not Zed Leppelin. But anyway. The um the drummer in Led Zeppelin, John Burnham, Bonham, Boonham. <laughs> they always said that he's the greatest drummer of all time, but like I would like to nominate Chad Smith of Red Hot Chili Peppers. I would like I would like to nominate Jad Smith as one of the greatest drummers of all time. Although I was talking about this with my dad the other day, but I think it's really unfair to like name something as the greatest of all time, like period mark. I think you can definitely say when something is one of the greatest or one of the most influential, which are not the same. I'll get to that in a bit. One second, guys. I'm not going to get ahead of myself. But, like, you know, you know. Wait, what was I talking about? Oh, yeah. But, like, I think that you can't really say that something is the greatest of all time because, like, you, you haven't heard everything, and not everything has happened yet. And, like, some, like... What if there's a drummer out there right now, like, at their home, at this very second, in, like, I don't know, Beijing, China? Is that a place? Is it in China? I don't know. Beijing, not Beijing. Belgium? I don't know. I'm confused now. I'm just going to keep going. Anyways, what if there's a drummer out there in the world right now making the new greatest drumming of all time? And you, and you don't know about them yet because, and also, so I think you can say that like the greatest, I feel like great of all, uh, greatest of all time is not right, but you could say my personal favorite in the time that I have experienced and also in all of the things that I've heard, you know, like you can't say greatest of all time because greatest is, I feel like greatest is a really like objective word, but you can say your favorite that you've heard so far, you know? Because you have, even if you say, like, your favorite of all time, it's still not, you can't say all time, you know? Because, like, all time implies, like, I hope you can still hear me. I just got, like, I got, a, I got like, a thing. It said low battery. I should plug it in, but I'm not going to. <laughs> I'm not going to, and you can't stop me. But anyways, um, Yeah. And, okay, what I was saying about how I think there's a difference between greatest and most influential is that greatest, I think, I really hate when something, when people say that something is really good just because it was, like, the first or just because it was, like, influential. Like, something can be really good. Like, I don't know. I just, I feel like you can definitely, you should definitely give credit where credit is due, and, like, I think it happens with movies a lot, like, I'm gonna say something controversial, but the movie Pulp Fiction, it's, like, okay, but, and I don't, I don't, I don't know enough about movies to say that, like, it's, if it's the greatest or not, or if it's even the most influential or not, but one thing that I do know is that the movie Pulp Fiction, everybody loves it, and most people say that it's the greatest movie of all time, or of time thus far, and I don't agree with that. I mean, I don't know what the greatest movie is, but I don't think it's that. Because I watched it, and I was just kind of like, okay. Like, oh, sure. And then I moved on with my life. And I don't, I've, I don't really think I've ever sat down and thought about Pulp Fiction and been like, I love Pulp Fiction. Pulp Fiction changed my life. Or, like, even when I was watching Pulp Fiction, I wasn't like, wow, I love Pulp Fiction. Or, like, 
I and I had no desire to watch Pulp Fiction again. In fact, when I finished watching Pulp Fiction, I was like, thank God it's finally done. Now, I'm not disrespecting Pulp Fiction. Pulp Fiction it is it is a good movie and it's influential. But do you know what it do you know why people say that it's the greatest of all time? Like go up to somebody who thinks that Pulp Fiction is the greatest of all time and ask them why they think that and they'll probably they're probably going to say because it was first. Like it did something that nobody had ever done before, which is really impressive and it's good for that. But does that really that alone does that really make it the greatest of all time that it did something cool that nobody else had done that now people have probably done better? No. So I think that we should definitely acknowledge that Pulp Fiction, and not just Pulp Fiction, but that's just an example, that, like, you know, things are really, things can be good and things can be first, but influentialness alone, you know, is not a reason to say whether something is really good or really not. And, yeah. So I think that we just, I think people are just like, ooh, ooh, Pulp Fiction is really good because nobody had ever done something like that before. When, like, really, that's, like, that is a good thing, but that, I feel like if you're only going on that, then, like, we could say that, like, I don't know. I just feel like that that's not a good enough reason for something to be really good. So, yeah, that's my thought on that. Um, anyways, oh, yeah, what I was saying about that is, well, I don't, okay, I'm just going to stop now. So, yeah, summary of what we learned today. One, the drum fill. Actually, no, all we learned today, scratch everything else I said. If, if I wanted you to leave this video with one information thing that you have informed yourself of it would be that the drum fill in the song in the air tonight i think it's actually called i can feel it and then like in the air tonight in parentheses but i don't know i don't really know but anyways if there's one thing we can learn it's that did not change the world and i will be the same person if i never heard that song goodbye namaste is that, like, appropriate? You know what? I'm going to make a video about cultural appropriation because I have a lot to say about cultural appropriation, but it's not really my place, so I'm not actually not going to do that because it's not my place to comment on cultural appropriation. It's not your place either unless you are a part of a culture that is, like, being appropriated. But also, I think everybody's culture is appropriated because culture is, like, so seamless. Like, there's what is the line between culture? I don't know. We're not, talking about, we're not talking about culture appropriation right now. We're talking about Pulp Fiction and Phil Collins. Goodbye.